Hello everyone and welcome to lesson number 11 in our Faith to Love Bible Study series. This lesson is entitled, If These Things Are Yours. If These Things Are Yours. We are continuing our study of 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. That's kind of our focus, but we have broadened that out to the first chapter, verses 1 through 15. And so yesterday we talked about the very last attribute in the list that Peter gives in verses 5, 6, and 7, and that was love. We talked about how love was the eighth attribute in this list that Peter gives, beginning with faith. And remember that Peter is, is describing how to grow Christian character. He's talking about how we diligently add to our faith virtue and then knowledge and then self-control and then perseverance and then godliness and then brotherly kindness and love. Now remember, let me do my little reminder about the um, link. If you want to follow along on a worksheet, you can click that link and pull that worksheet up. It goes right along with the lesson. I want to talk about the, the verb that is understood before each attribute that is in this list that Peter is giving. The verb supply or add is understood before each attribute. So if you go back and look at verse number five, it says, but also for this very reason, the very reason being the first four verses, what is talked about there, the exceeding great and precious promises that God has given to his children, his followers, and that through those promises, we might be able to be partakers or sharers in his divine nature. And Peter says, because of that, for that reason, then give all diligence and add to your faith virtue. And then he says to virtue knowledge, but the understood word there is add to your virtue knowledge, add to your knowledge self-control. That verb is understood. And that means that each attribute grows out of and is produced by the one that comes before it. So each creates and makes possible what comes next in the line of attributes. Remember, he is talking about this growth. It's intensifying, this growth of character. And so each thing that follows the one before it is added or supplied into the attribute that is previously listed. Now, there is also a preposition that is attached to each attribute in the Greek, in the Greek um, text. Which preposition is that and what does it indicate? The preposition that is attached to each attribute is the word in, I-N. And then the attribute that follows is included in the one that was just before it, the one that just came before it. And so then you've got this picture of add into your faith virtue. Add into your virtue knowledge. Add into your knowledge self-control. And so you've got this adding on this growth of character. And it's important that each attribute is, is developed and then that produces the next one in line. And it reminded me of it reminded me of my daughter's Russian stacking doll. She has um, the Anushka doll, and it's the the little stacking doll. The, here's I just brought it down so you could have a visual. Um, the little doll looks like this, and you know there are little dolls that stack inside. And so I was as I was thinking about this idea of supplying into, I thought about how this this doll right here could represent faith. Remember, faith is the, it's the belief, it's the hope, it's what is, is motiv motivating you into action. So if we think of her as being the faith, and then look, we are going to take the next virtue and stack it in, which is, or the next attribute and stack it in, which is virtue. 
We're going to add it, supply it to our faith. And then we're going to supply to that knowledge. That's going to go in. And then we're going to add self-control and perseverance. They're going to be supplied into the next one. And then we're going to have godliness and brotherly kindness. And then at the very end, we're going to have love, the attribute, the attribute that tops it all off. And then we've got this, this perfect, this perfect, complete character here. And all of these attributes have contributed to the one that follows. And then we've got them all together in one, representing the Christian character. And so I just have, I just thought of, of the little Russian stacking doll as I was thinking of that concept of supplying into something else. So on your worksheet, I have a, a couple of lists here, number three and four. The attributes that are necessary in forming the Christian character that follow faith. You start with faith, and then there are attributes that follow that that are necessary in forming the Christian character, and that is virtue, knowledge, self-control, and perseverance. Those come next. Then you have an attribute that reveals the follower of Christ to be a servant of God, and that is the attribute of godliness. So you've got these first these first few attributes that are are developing personally inside of you to develop Christian character. Then you have this attribute that is necessary in in revealing a follower of Christ as a servant of God, and that is godliness. That is the relationship that you have with God that is represented in your reverence the way that you live out your, um, your love and respect for God in your everyday life. Then you have an attribute that reveals the follower of Christ to be a member of the family of God, and that is brotherly kindness. That is treating um, your brothers and sisters in Christ with tender affection. And then we have an attribute that reveals the follower of Christ to be concerned with the goodwill of all people. And that is the attribute of love. Why is it important that we are diligent about adding these attributes listed in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 and 7? Why is it important that we diligently grow these attributes? What is it about them that makes it important? What is our end goal? The idea is that we want to look like our Father. We want to look like the one in whose promises we are given the ability to be partakers in his divine nature. The one whose divine nature we are being invited into we want to look like him. And so if we are going to be sharers in that, we should look like that. We should look like him. God, through his exceeding great and precious promises, has offered us a place in his family. He's offered us to be his children, to come in and be members of his household. And we should grow the character to where we look like members of God's family. That is important. The other thing, the other reason Peter is specifically writing to these people at this time in history, when he was writing this letter, remember I said way back in one of the first lessons, there was a very strong threat of false teachers. There were many people that were going around and they were teaching things that weren't true. They weren't consistent with the truth. And so Peter is warning them in this letter about those false teachers. And one of the things he wants them to do is to grow a character that is distinctly different from those people who are spreading things that are not true. Look like this 
which is in direct opposition to what the false teachers look like. Grow this character so that you look like someone who is a child of God. So that is important. We need to look like we are people who are the recipients of exceeding great and precious promises. And let me just say here, kind of as a side note, this is not, when we talk about growing these attributes, it's not like that if you are developing your, um, if, you're, if you're developing virtue, if you're growing virtue, it's not like you can't work on anything else down the road. Well, I've got to work on virtue. I can't even worry about knowledge right now. It's not, it's not that idea. It's that you grow each one of them. You practice all of these things. You continually practice all of them. But as you focus on each one, as your virtue grows, as you, as you diligently work on adding virtue into your faith, then that begins to grow. And that will lead to the growth of knowledge. They, they roll into each other, but that's, it doesn't mean that you can't practice love, agape love, because you're still working on your self-control. It's not that idea. We're continually working on all of them. We're continually working on each one of these attributes. But as we grow stronger in these specific attributes, they will then lead to us growing and supplying in with these other attributes as we go. So we're just, we're working on developing Christian character. And so what happens then when we are working on this, when we are developing this character, what is the purpose? We just talked about some reasons on why it's important. Um, number six is, is the beginning of the next verse. It's the beginning of, it's looking at verse number eight in our text. So our text says, verse eight of Second Peter chapter one, for if these things are yours, and abound, you will neither you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's break this down a little bit. For this word for remember when I said early on that you have to look at the beginning of each verse because sometimes there are these context clues that tell you to look back. When, when a verse starts with the word for, or it starts with the word therefore, or because, or if, anything like that, you need to go back and see what is being talked about in the context. So Peter has just gone through all of this list of attributes, and then he says for. And that means, literally, it can be, it can be translated to indeed. Indeed, or in truth if these things are yours. This conjunction here, for, is introducing a point that is going to be made that is even truer than the previous. He's just listed some things, and he's going to say, indeed, in truth, if these are yours, talking about the things he just listed. This word here is a conjunction. It's used to express cause, or explanation, inference, or continuation. Its sense, the sense in which it's used, is shaped by the statement that just came before it. So here, Peter is saying, here are all these things. And now, in truth, listen to this, because this is what you need to know. This next statement is dependent on all of these things I just said for, if these things are yours, what is the meaning of are yours? Are yours is meaning in you. In you. If these are in you, it is talking about possessing these things. It is literally in the Greek text would read this way. If these things are in your possession, if you possess these things, then the text says you will be neither barren 
nor unfruitful. So let's look at these words. My, um, my text says barren. Sometimes a translated word there is idle, not idle or unfruitful. Your text even might say, if, uh, if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither useless. Some translations say useless nor unfruitful. So let's take a look at those words. Idle would mean or give this idea of lazy or unprofitable. There's nothing, there's no gain. It's producing no gain, no profit. So that again would be that idea of useless. Nothing's coming from it. And then this word unfruitful is not producing what you should be producing, not yielding what you should be yielding. So again, that idea of, of useless, not producing anything. And he says, if these things are yours, you will not be useless. You will not be unfruitful. You'll be the opposite. So we'll come back and look at what the opposite of that is when we read it through again. But let's go on to the next part. Um, Nor fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In here is really, um, in the Greek text, more like into or unto, into or unto. And so it is indicating the point reached or the result of something. Into or unto. Sometimes you might have it translated like, or it might um, literally mean moving toward, moving toward. Um, into the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word for knowledge in this verse is epinosis, E-P-I-G-N-O-S-I-S. -S. Sometimes when we read that Greek word in English, we don't pronounce the G. Some people don't. It's epinosis. Sometimes it is pronounced epignosis. Um, but this is different than the knowledge that we talked about back in verse 5. Remember when we were adding to our faith? virtue and to our virtue knowledge, knowledge there was gnosis, G-N-O-S-I-S, -S, gnosis. That was that practical knowledge. That's kind of the knowledge of, okay, I know what I believe, now here's what I should and should not do. It's instructional. It comes with reading and, and studying. It is, it is taking an idea or a belief and putting it into practice. And in order to do that, you have to know what you should and should not do. So the knowledge listed earlier in verse 5 is this very practical knowledge. Just knowing spirit, basic spiritual truths. What is right and what is wrong. What I should do or what I shouldn't do. This knowledge here in verse 8 is a different kind of knowledge. It is a knowledge that is literally... Um, literally means a full knowledge, a complete knowledge. I was reading an article recently, and um, I am sorry I can't quote it. It was, um, it was just, I don't know that it was even religious-based. It was just talking about the difference between those words gnosis and epinosis in the Greek. And the man that was writing the article said, and I believe he was a, I believe he was a physician, and he was saying, let me make this comparison for you. It would be kind of like if, if I asked you, what do the kidneys do? And you had a very basic understanding that uh, the kidneys are a filter and they are going to help to, um, to eliminate fluid from the body. And you can give a very basic definition of what the kidneys are. Then he said, epinosis, though, would be able to explain much deeper about what the, how the kidneys actually function and go in and talk about um, very specific things that happen within the renal system that, um, that is a much deeper understanding. And so that was kind of his way of distinguishing between the two. One is kind of 
a, all right, this is what it does. I understand what, what the kidney does. And then this level of, of knowledge, the epinosis is, this is why it does that. This is how it does that, how they function. And so a difference in, in kind of this practical knowledge, but then this deeper level of understanding. And so in summary, what is the Holy Spirit telling us through the hand of Peter here about what we can expect if the attributes listed in, five, in verses five through seven are in us and they are multiplying? The idea is that as they are in our life and as they are multiplying, we will be productive. We will be producing good works as our life is working toward this full and complete knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now hang on there for just one second because as I was looking at my sheet, I think I skipped right over number seven talking about the word abound. So you might have been looking at your worksheet wondering is she gonna come back around to number seven? So I am so sorry, yes we are. Let's just talk about it really quick. What does the word abound mean here? For if these things are yours, talking about the attributes, and abound, abound here means to multiply or to increase. The word abound means to exist in abundance, but here it also means that it's increasing multiplying. It's growing. If these characteristics, if these attributes are yours and they are increasing, you're continuing to grow them, then you will not be useless. You will not be unprofitable. You will accomplish good things. You will accomplish good works, useful things as you are working toward this full and complete knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to just kind of in conclusion, have us look at a couple places because that is our goal. Remember we are in this process of sanctification where we are being transformed as we continue to live and study and allow the word as we study it, as we apply it to our lives and we allow ourselves to be changed by the truth of God's word and as we live it out in our everyday lives, we are being transformed into the image of Christ. And so turn in your Bible to 1 John. Let's look at 1 John chapter 3. Verses one through three, I'll read this really quick because it captures this idea really well. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. That's a precious promise. That is an exceeding great and precious promise. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. One day we will have a full and complete knowledge of Jesus Christ. When we see him one day as he is, and we will be like him, that will be the full revelation. That will be the seeing him in all fullness, in all completeness, because we will be like him. That is what we're working toward. And as we are here on this earth, then we are growing these attributes so that we are developing this character that is a character that that looks like our Father, that allows us to partake in His divine nature because of His great and precious promises. And so, Peter says, if these things are yours, 
if these things are yours, then you are going to be profitable. You're going to do great things. You're going to do good works. You're going to produce good as you are working toward this knowledge, this full and complete knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that's what we wanted to be. We want to be productive in the kingdom. We want to be people who are who are bringing about good results, who are bringing about good work and good for the name of our Father, for the glory of our Father. And so um, we don't want to, we don't want to be barren and unfruitful. We don't want to be the type of people who aren't producing good fruit. So if these things are yours, then you will not be unfruitful. You will not be idle or useless or barren. All right, so tomorrow will be lesson number 12, and we're going to talk about what if you don't have these things? What if you don't have these attributes? What will the result of that be? So we'll talk about that tomorrow. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day. Peace and love to you. Bye-bye.